Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today is the second episode in a series I like to call MFF University, covering basic topics that have either gone into disuse or have outdated videos on them for newer players. Now, I know most of you graduated from MFF University a long time ago, but you still come back to watch the videos because you're awesome people. For everybody else who absolutely needs to watch this video to learn about what stats are, which are basically the most important topic we are going to cover in the university altogether, let's jump right into it. Now, despite how many amazing guides there are in Marvel Future Fight, there's actually nothing in any of these guides to explicitly explain or even visually show you what the different stats are and how they impact your character builds. But trust me when I say the impact to your builds is absolutely massive. So first thing we need to cover is what are stats? So stats are all of the numbers you're going to see on the characters page here on the right hand side above the growth score below their name and level. But also when you click on that details button again on that right side, you're going to get hit with a massive list of just numbers. This is just a statistician's dream, a mathematician's dream, um, but it can be very daunting and very scary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break down what the different stats are. And then in the second half, we're going to talk about where to get those stats and why they're so important. Attack speed controls how fast an animation is in game. Every character's skills one through six have animations. And when you press the skill, the animation triggers. Attack speed is going to control how fast your character goes into the skill when you press the button, how long they take during the skill, during the animation, and then how long it takes them to get out of this. Super important for timing because if you're trying to match it to your obelisk or your CTP proc, if you're trying to match it to buffs that you have, you want the timing to be as consistent as possible. And generally, you want the timing to be as short as possible so you can squeeze in as many different skills, but also so that if you need to stop attacking to dodge a certain attack pattern from a boss, you have the timing to do so. The cap for attack speed is 130%. Critical rate is the chance that your character has to critically strike an enemy, which will then increase the amount of damage that you deal, and it will add an exclamation mark to the end of the stat number. Now, the amount of damage that it gets multiplied by when you critically strike or your critical rate activates is measured and controlled by your critical damage. It's also controlled by how much critical defense the boss has and all these other stats hidden in a formula. We're not going to get into all that. For the purposes of this explanation, critical rate is the chance to deal more damage, and critical damage is how much more damage you will deal if you critically damage. The cap for crit rate is 75%, and the cap for crit damage is 200%. Generally, you want to keep them very close together. Recovery rate multiplies the healing that your character gets by a certain number. This isn't to be confused with healing. Recovery rate does not heal your character automatically. But if your character has healing, then recovery rate will affect the amount that is healed uh, by a certain percentage. So the higher your recovery rate on a character like Wolverine or Sabretooth or Juggernaut that has an automatic heal, the higher your heal will be. Conversely, if you have a heal on a character like Gore and you have very low recovery rate, then the character will heal much less every time they heal. The cap for recovery rate is 250%. Dodge is pretty straightforward. It's your character's chance to dodge an incoming attack. This is also going to be controlled and governed by a mathematical formula that we can't see in game relative to your character's level, the enemy's level, dodge chance, hit chance, etc. All you need to know is that the dodge cap is 75%. Movement speed surprisingly controls how fast your character moves when you control the joystick. The movement speed cap is 130%. Reduced debuff duration or crowd control time down on your cards affects how long debuffs apply to your character. The cap for this is 75%. Ignore defense affects how much of the enemy's defenses your character ignores when they attack. It's a very simple thing, but it is hugely important to the game, probably the most important stat in the game, and the cap for this is 50%. Reduced cooldown duration or skill cooldown on cards controls how long you have to wait before you can press a skill again. Every skill, once you press it, will trigger a cooldown, and that cooldown could be 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or even 60 seconds. So reduced cooldown duration tied for the most important stat in the game reduces how much time you have to wait before you can press a skill again. It's hugely important, and the cap for it is 50%. Oh, and keep in mind, reduced cooldown duration does not affect passive abilities. The rest of the stats on a character are pretty self-explanatory. You have fire, cold, lightning, poison, and mind resist on the right side, and those are just resistances to the five different elemental damage types. Then on the left side here, you have ignore dodge, which basically allows you to ignore a character's dodge chance, so they basically sort of 
counter each other. High dodge chance will make you dodge a lot and not allow people to hit you. But if you have a lot of ignore dodge, then you can ignore the dodge that is, you know, otherwise making you miss a bunch. Uh, and then you have fire damage, cold damage, lightning damage, poison damage, mind damage, which just increases the amount of those damage types that you do, but only if your character already does those damage types. So just to briefly talk about elemental damage, uh, when a character has elemental damage, you will see it on their skills. So Miles Morales, it says lightning damage. It has a little lightning icon. For someone like Sabretooth, it doesn't. He just has physical damage. He just has a little fist uh, for, an, for an energy damage character. They just have that little energy neutron. You cannot give a character elemental damage and then have them deal elemental damage just because you gave them the stat. Giving the character the stat doesn't enable them to deal that type of damage. It's only to amplify the damage that they already deal. And then finally at the bottom here, we have additional pierce damage and concentration. We're not gonna get too detailed into this. Just know that additional pierce damage is by far the best stat and it's an end game stat. And then concentration is a supposed to be a PVP stat to amplify CTP effects and uh, artifact effects, but it doesn't work very well. And it's just completely outclassed by additional pierce damage. So now that you know what stats are, you need to know where to get them. And this is basically the most important part because it's the least well explained in the game. Now, from an RPG point of view, you can build your character and building your character gives them a bunch of stats, but there are also some sort of semi hidden uh, obscure ways to give your character stats, which are vitally important. So let's get into it. For stats that you can give on the gear, you have Uru and uh, Odin's Blessings. Now, Uru and Odin's Blessings don't cover every single stat in the game, and that's a common theme. Some stats are just very hard to find, or they don't come uh, on things that you can equip on characters, but you can still get a lot of the really important ones. As you can see, there's Uru for ignore defense, dodge, HP, physical defense, energy attack, crit damage, crit rate, you know, attack speed, skill cooldown. A lot of these super duper important and then amplifying the uru increases the stat even more so very nice way to get a bunch of stats if we go over to the iso iso will give you flat stats on the iso itself so this one gives me all attack this one gives me physical attack this one gives me attack and hp this one gives me critical rate uh, over here in the corner in addition to those flat stats that you get from iso if you complete an iso 8 stat, you also get percentage stats you can see they're plus 8.5 percent attack plus 7.7 percent attack speed so pretty huge stat bonuses here on an iso 8 stat some artifacts can give you stats but we're not going to get too much into that some uh, obelisks and and uh, ctps can give you stats as well these can be very important although not as important as what we're about to talk about uh, after we talk about this one which is the last sort of character building way to get stats which is through your uniform you can also have stats on your uniform but that's not governed by the player's choice that's governed by the the, the devs and the people who make the game now those are the ways that you can get stats from building your character however there's a bunch of other ways to get stats you can get stats from a team up bonus with se separate characters you can see here we're getting all defense and dodge also from leaderships keep in mind that the stats that you see on the details page are reflected by the character if you're looking at the character and they're on a team so what does that mean if i put wolverine over here and i use destroyer's lead for 30 percent energy defense my wolverine's energy defense goes up from 27,000 to 32,000. now if i either take him off the team or if i switch to a different team his defense goes back down to 27,000. that's because it's just not reflected in the team that's currently being looked at so keep in mind this can be a good way to gauge the absolute stat bonuses you're going to be getting before you jump into a fight but it can also be a very easy way to confuse yourself and wonder why your character's stats keep dropping and basically about once a month i get an email from a or a message from a panicked fan being like ah my magneto's attack keeps dropping by twenty thousand. yes that's because he's on the team giving himself 50 50 basic attack and then you switch teams and he's not there anymore so he's not giving himself the 50 percent it's kind of a wonky system that the way the devs have uh, created it but we sort of just have to deal with it as players. Uh, from there, you can also get stats from your alliance. This is super important, often overlooked. I always recommend players join a level 30 alliance. Join a level 30 alliance. Super important. You can see the buffs you get here. 14% crit damage, 14% crit rate, 14% dodge, and 14% skill cooldown. Huge bonuses from being in a level 30 alliance. These numbers will go down as the alliance level goes down to 1 from 30. 
so you want to be as close to 30 as possible or you want to grind up your alliance to 30 if you're in an alliance with friends to get those stats as soon as possible then you can also get stats from the newly introduced x of swords uh system i'm not going to go into too much depth about this because the majority of the stats just come from the all attack buff on the element mastery but as you can see here for example this sword gives me almost four percent movement speed and 4.6 percent fire resist so you can have a decent chunk of stats on swords but we'll leave that for the sword guide videos and then we come to the by far the most important way and the easiest way to get a bunch of stats and this is cards now i'm not going to go into the details of card crafting but what you need to know is this is hugely important and to, just to give you a basic example here with these cards that i built in one video so in just like 15 minutes i built these cards from scratch uh, it's not very difficult at all and this is why players tell you focus so much on cards in the beginning you get so many stats from your cards look at this one card is giving all 255 characters and any future characters that i unlock 10 percent dodge 10 percent cooldown and then it's giving them some ignore defense and then some resistances it's not, it, those are not that important but look at this all attack cooldown very 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 vital stats that are going to allow your character to deal more damage deal damage faster take less damage the whole shebang uh in general as we say that the common guide here is to focus on cooldown and ignore defense at the start when you're first building your cards and then later on you can work in uh the attacks and the hps and the the other the other counting stats that don't have caps but definitely try to hit the cap as soon as you can on ignore defense and skill cooldown that is the common uh you know knowledge that we pass on to new players and now you know exactly why you should do that so those are the the wrap up for stats and that's essentially the guide that you need for stats hit me up in the comments down below if you have any other questions about stats or how you should be focusing on stats and if you have any other questions always 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 feel free to join the discord server discord.gg slash the new meta we have tons of people there over a thousand daily active members who can help you out give you guides give you tips give you uh, showcases from their own accounts it's a fantastic vibrant community and it's only going to grow bigger once you join giggity anyways <laughs> thanks so much for watching smash the like button and i'll see you in the next one take care